from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. There goes another one down the ways. Another tank off the assembly line and into America's line of defense, making America strong. But the strength of a nation rests on the health of the people, on the health of the army, on the health of the men in factory and farm who equip and feed the army, on the health of all the people in every walk of life. That's important. So just how healthy are we? For instance, how are your teeth? Have you thought of them lately? Well, that's what we want to talk about, about your teeth. Will everybody in the audience please run the tip of his tongue over his teeth? Just to get into the spirit of the story, please. That's right, thank you, just like that. That's the idea, thank you. And what do you find? Anything wrong? Bridge work? Missing teeth? That's what I thought. Well, now that we've taken inventory of our own teeth, let's go on with the story. Here is a scene familiar to every part of the nation. Selective servicemen being examined for physical fitness prior to their induction in the Army. Would you be surprised to know that more men are rejected for bad teeth than for any other reason? that of all those termed unfit for service, 20% were turned back because of dental disabilities. That's an alarming figure. And if so many of these men who should be in the prime of health have bad teeth, what about the rest of our 130 millions? What about you? It's something to think about. There goes another one. Turned down by the army. Turned down by business. Turned down by the girls. Can't get to first base. A failure in the army, in business, in romance. Reason? Bad teeth. Result? Bad appearance. But what about this chap? Take a good look at him because he's going to be with us most of the picture. Name? Danny Smith. Age 24. Husky, clean-cut young American. Looks like he has good sound teeth. Did he take care of them? Is it just luck or what? For the answer to that, we'll have to go back to the time when Danny reached the ripe old age of two years, a point in life that suggests to his mother he should be taken to the dentist for an examination. Mr. Smith is a little surprised. What? Take a two-year-old to the dentist? Nonsense. But Mrs. Smith reports that at a meeting of the Mother's Club, a doctor advised parents to take their children to the dentist as soon as all the baby teeth are through the gums. But Mr. Smith still thinks the idea is pretty ridiculous. Children of two going to the dentist. Silly, says Mr. Smith. So, they go to the dentist. The doctor gets off to a good start with Danny and makes him feel right at home. Child psychology, they call it nowadays. Danny takes the examination in his stride, doesn't mind it a bit. In fact, he enjoys the experience. He'll remember it as good fun when it comes time for the next visit in four months. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith are going to remember it too, for the doctor told them many surprising things about teeth that day. For instance, he informed the Smiths they could walk along anywhere and stop almost anybody and find they have decayed teeth. Yes, anybody at all. Take this in a hurry, gentlemen. Like almost everybody else, he has decayed teeth. And what does he do? Well, let's see what he does. He thinks it over very carefully and then decides he's too busy to take care of a little cavity. <laughs> 
It doesn't hurt, and after all, what's a little cavity? Nothing. Months go by and a year goes by, and then what happens? Our friend comes running, and now the little cavity has become a big cavity, and the little pain is a big pain. So suddenly, he's not too busy. He wouldn't bother with the cavity, so he'll have to bother with bridge work. And he didn't want to run up a little bill, so now it's a big bill. After all, what's a little cavity? Well, the years pass. Danny, a normal youngster of normal tastes, and that includes candy, grows into a stalwart young man of excellent appearance, glowing with good health, he reflects the advice and care of his mother, who saw to it through the years of his boyhood and after, that Danny had the best of physical attention, particularly in the matter of his teeth. And those regular visits of Danny's to the dentist have paid dividends. He has strong, fine-looking teeth, and they unquestionably aid in the favorable impression one instantly gets of this alert, pleasant-looking young man. Just as they played their part some months back when Danny made application for an important job that meant a lot to him. Perhaps you question the statement that teeth strikingly affect your appearance. If so, take a look at those about you. Better yet, look at this lovely young lady. Since this picture is about faces, observe how bright, healthy teeth complement her attractive face. Nice teeth always help. We don't appreciate how essential they are until we make comparisons. As in the case of these gentlemen, note how teeth affect their appearance. This first one, would you say there was competition for Robert Taylor here? Or here? Or here? After all, what's a little cavity? Well, let's get back to Danny. We see he has good sound teeth, a must if he would be healthy, and a must if he values his personal appearance. How about keeping his teeth that way? How does Danny handle that must? Well, like some of us, he sometimes forgets. For instance, he is forgetting that important date he has with the dentist on June 18th. June 18th, Danny. That's today, and you're supposed to go to the dentist. Remember? No, he doesn't remember. Well, we've got some bad news for him. He doesn't know it yet but one of his teeth is beginning to decay. The strange part of it is, Danny takes good care of his teeth. For example, he eats good, solid food. Very little sweets. But his teeth are decaying anyway. That's how teeth are. There's no way of stopping the decay except by going to a dentist, having it removed, and the tooth filled. Danny brushes his teeth every day, and properly too. But that doesn't stop decay. His teeth and your teeth need more than a bath. They need a dentist. The dental appointment has been completely forgotten. Danny is hard at work. But unfortunately for him, the decay is also hard at work. He just doesn't realize how he'll look if he loses that tooth. It does make a difference, doesn't it? Danny is going to be just another man who wouldn't bother with a little cavity. That is, unless something happens, unless something warns him of the danger. Wow, well, Danny got his warning. The cold water did the trick, and he's lucky it happened before the decay had gone too far. Yes, the cold water was the pause that remembers, the pause that made him remember he forgot. And before you and I can say, see your dentist regularly, Danny will be sitting in the dentist's chair. And the decay has been checked, and the tooth saved. But what's all this got to do with defense, you ask? Plenty, I assure you. Now, and desperately, is the time for all good men and all good women to come to the aid of their country. We, the people, can't render 100% aid if we, the people, have bad health because of bad teeth. Danny is just an example. He had the training and foresight to safeguard his teeth, and when danger struck, he stopped the decay that could have sapped his health and made him unfit to serve his country at a time when it needed him. On the state of his health and all our health may in a very large degree depend the strength of our defense. Danny is ready. He has prepared. 
and the men who are in the armed forces, they will be prepared. They will get the dental care they need. But the men in industry, farmers, students, housewives, children, how about them? Are they getting the proper dental care as individuals or as members of the community? As a matter of fact, you're part of the strength or weakness of this country. How about you? This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.